All right, you guys, this is Ross. Today we're talking once again about pawpaw. And the last video that we did on the pawpaw is we actually talked about our harvest. This was the first harvest that I had of pawpaw ever. And it was, took me seven years after planting these trees behind me. There's a PA golden on the right and a mango on the left. They're both in the same hole. And so it took me seven years and I said, it's worth it. It was totally worth the wait because the pawpaw that I had eaten was so above and beyond any other pawpaw I've had in the past, I was just thoroughly impressed. And in my mind is among really the best fruits you can grow, especially here in a temperate climate. Um, and so I wanted to know the reasoning behind that. Why was my pawpaw so much better than all the other pawpaws I've had? I have had quite a bit. I've gotten them from farmer's markets. I've gotten them from various different people of name varieties, wild varieties, uh, you know, you name it. I've gotten them from so many different places, so many different people, so many different varieties. Why was mine above and beyond the others? Was it the fact that mango is just a better tasting pawpaw than the rest? Is it because maybe we've had a drought here and maybe my trees, because I don't water anything over here, maybe they were a bit more intensified in flavor and maybe had a higher bricks because of that? Um, I think the answer actually is rather simple and it applies to pretty much all the fruits we grow and that the time in which we pick our fruits matters a whole lot. And for some reason, I guess this is a pretty common thing within the, the world of growing pawpaw, that people pick their pawpaws early. Maybe if they're out in the wild, they're only there for one day, you know? Um, maybe if they have their own tree, some of the pawpaws prematurely fall off the tree. Maybe uh, there's a squirrel, maybe there's wind, maybe there's something knocking the pawpaws off the trees and you're finding them on the ground and maybe they're not necessarily just too soft just yet. When I was able to actually come over here to my trees and very carefully observe them to when exactly I should pick, I was feeling the fruits, uh, I was feeling the fruits on the tree. They were definitely soft on the tree, like a, you know, like a nice stone fruit, like a nice peach, right? The fruit actually was fully ripe on the tree. You take it right off and it comes off with almost no give, right? The stem here at the top of the fruit, the stem either comes right off the tree and with the fruit, or the stem breaks away here from the top of the fruit, as you can see. And so if you have a fruit, unfortunately, for whatever reason it happens, that isn't fully ripe on the tree, that is picked prematurely, that does fall off the tree, that is knocked off, that is whatever it is, it's just not going to be as good. And I'm finding here, after eating not just more mango pawpaws that had really some of them fallen off, or the same thing with this PA Golden, it just is what it is. There is, there is no comparison in my mind to one that is picked properly to one that is not. And so I find that this is a bit, it is a bit, un, um, you know, common sense, but I don't think the information is really out there. I don't know of anyone saying this information, which to me is kind of mind blowing because I've only been growing pawpaw for five minutes compared to some other people. Uh, but it just is blatantly obvious to me based on my observations here this year. Um, and if you want really, really good pawpaw, you got to let them hang on the tree for that last moment. They're just like a fig. And you know, you guys, I know my figs. The longer every single day the fig hangs on the tree, the better and better it gets. The same thing here with the pawpaw. And it's so much true. The same thing can be said with a lot of other fruits. So obviously there becomes a point where things start to go downhill. You have to pick it at the right moment. But you know, it, it's, uh, I think, easily des um, described here in the flavor of this one here. So let me try this PA Golden for you, and I'll describe really what is the difference between one that's picked properly and one that's not. So this one was picked about three days ago. It was not soft enough to eat. I let it sit on the counter. It softened up over about three days. And this one here has a, a distinct bitterness to it quite a bit of a bitterness and it also has a lot of fragrance to it that really strong pawpaw smell 
that's almost like an overripe smell. And so this pawpaw, although I would not say it's, it's overripe, it was picked early. And because it was picked early, it has those two qualities to it. I don't know why that is. It'd be really worth exploring. But when I pick them right off the tree, they have the perfect texture. They're already super soft. Um, they don't have any of that pawpaw, uh, you know, nasty fragrance to them. And they're not bitter. There's almost a tinge of bitterness in there, and that's it. So those are the main complaints I find. In fact, when you see like different pawpaw tastings that are done and they rank them, one of the categories is bitterness. Well, is the pawpaw even picked at the right time to accurately judge it and give it a, a number? It just seems so foolish to me. Um, I don't know, can we even trust some of those tastings that have been done? I, it's just crazy to me. Um, so. In any case, I love these fruits. I still think this is good. Um, I've had some that are way worse than this from my own trees, from other trees this year. So this is about an average run of the mill pawpaw, but when they're picked perfect, they're insanely good. And uh, so for my money, I think I, this information is just well worth, worth sharing with you guys. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.